we'll find out in three to five years who the actual winners were. But uh, for me tonight, it starts with the Philadelphia 76ers turning those future draft picks into Markel Fultz, the uh, consensus number one player in this draft, probably since the end of their college basketball season. And the interesting thing about Fultz was he fits the Sixers' needs. They have a terrific young front line with Simmons and Embiid and Sharich, and now uh, they, Markel Fultz fills that need in the backcourt, a playmaking scoring guard. Another winner, I thought, was the Phoenix Suns. There are some people, and I'm probably included in this group, that believes that Josh Jackson out of Kansas may be the best player in this entire draft. He slipped to number four. The Suns are rebuilding. They have a good young backcourt led by 20-year-old Devin Booker, uh, who I believe had 70 points in a game in an NBA game this year. And now they add Josh Jackson, two-way player, highly competitive. I thought the third winner was the Minnesota Timberwolves. They turned a number seven pick, uh, trading a couple of young players who I think are pretty good. Chris Dunn will be a second-year player. Zach Levine has been a starter for the T-Wolves. And they got an all-star, Jimmy Butler. When you look at Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins and Ricky Rubio out of Spain, and you add Jimmy Butler to that mix, a guy that Tom Thibodeau knows very well from coaching him in Chicago, I believe they are winners tonight as well. I think the two best fits in this draft are two guys that were compared all year long and even leading up to this draft. Jason Tatum and for the Celtics and Josh Jackson from the Phoenix Suns. If you think about it, the Celtics are a tough-minded, defensive-oriented team, and they've added six foot eight, Jason Tatum, a scoring machine out of Duke University. So uh, given where the Celtics are right now with their roster, and they had success this year, and given that they still have room for some high-level free agents, Jason Tatum's scoring should fit in. This year it was a little slower on the international scene. So when you look at these young players in this year's draft, and particularly Frank Nielakina out of France, you're looking at a guy that I believe is going to make an easy transition to the NBA. Keep in mind that France has produced outstanding quality NBA players like Tony Parker, Boris Diaw, Nicholas Batum, and the Utah Jazz Stifle Tower, Rudy Gobert. Frank is a six foot five, 18 year old guard, very versatile, defense, offense, playmaking, shooting, and a good head for the game. He's gonna be, I think, a solid player in New York for the Knicks. I'm not sure he's gonna be an all-star, but he'll be a productive NBA player.